<clears throat> we good to go? Go for it. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome to the April 2nd, 2021 uh, Muslim Space uh, Khutbah. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nasta'ghfiruhu, wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina, wa min sayyat a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudillallah, wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises belong to Allah We praise him and you ask him for forgiveness and for guidance we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evils of our own actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one can lead him or her astray. And whoever he leads astray, no one can lead him or her back to the straight path. I bear witness that there is no other deity but Allah by himself, no associates with him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O you who have believe, believed, be reverent of Allah as he should be and do not die except as a Muslim. O you who have believed, be reverent of Allah and always say a word directed towards the truth so that he can make your conduct whole and sound and forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has attained the highest achievement. My sisters and brothers today in Islam, I had, I had an interesting conversation with a friend recently and that conversation left me uh, refreshed and inspired. Uh, that conversation reminded me of how Allah works in his way and brings about inspiration in the most unexpected places. This friend and I were speaking about love and loss and I reflected on this and it struck me. Love inevitably comes with loss. Whatever object, whichever person we love or adore or cherish will eventually perish. Objects fade away and objects lose their luster or they break. The people we love will eventually pass away and we will mourn them and we will pass away and they will mourn us. In order to love deeply, we have to be prepared to lose deeply. And until this conversation, I really never connected the two. I acknowledge that this is, may not be a profound uh, idea to many of you, but it still struck me. And I think about those who are close to me and about those who bring me so much joy. And then I become sad, but for a moment. You know, what's the point of love if it's going to lead to so much, lead to so much pain? Then another thought struck me just as quickly. Is there a love that does not go away? Is there a love that does not pair or match with sadness or with death? The only one that never perishes is Allah, al Hay, the ever-living. Love for our maker is a love that can't end and can only grow and be never ending. How about cultivating that kind of experience or that kind of love? That was something that just hit me after that conversation. But I don't think one just loves God just like that. It doesn't just happen. Maybe it does, but maybe it doesn't. In my readings, it takes effort, active prayer, active contemplation, active repentance, and active rev and reverence. It won't happen automatically just because we say we are Muslim or whatever tradition you are, for those of us around us. In our tradition in Islam, we have a roadmap of sorts to help, to help us to find and to hold on and to develop this kind of a relationship with Allah. A relationship of a worshiper to the Lord of all creation that's based on the sake of worship and not based on fear or based on a transaction. It's a roadmap with three stops or stations on the journey to a relationship with Allah. These are the stations of Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Islam defined as a submission or a surrendering. Iman defined as a faith or translating the word directly into English, 
a station of safety and security. And then Ihsan, which is a spiritual excellence, which means that we perceive and realize that the reflection of Allah is all around us and in everyone and everything that we encounter. Now, all of us here in this gathering are, at the very least, we are at that first station of Islam. By definition, you are here and I are here. We have submitted, and so we're at that first station. Some of us may have moved on or are into that second and third station. If you're like me, perhaps you live at the first and second stations and not at the third. How can we get to the third? That would be an awesome place to be. I don't have the answer, but in this khutbah or the rest of what we're going to talk about, I'm going to describe what each station is in the hope that it inspires you and inspires me to find a way there to ihsan or excellence. Then perhaps we can experience a love that will not end in loss and not end in sadness, but just the opposite. One that will continue and that is infinite and can only intensify. So Islam, we all should know that Islam means to submit in peace. It means submitting physically to the laws of Allah. We are submitting to be servants of God so we can admit that our ego is nothing. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam is, quote, we testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. To perform the ritual prayer, to pay the zakat, to fast in Ramadan, and to make the pilgrimage to the sacred house if you're able to do so, unquote. We also, as part of submitting, stand up for what is good and avoid and warn against what is evil. We are submitting via prayers and fasting and hajj and these physical acts because we accept God's will and plan for us. He is Al-Rahman and Al-Rahim. And what has occurred in our lives and what is occurring to you now is by his plan and by his decree. Certainly we can make an effort and we plan and we do the best we can with what we have, but then we leave the outcome to Allah. Only he knows the future and we must be certain that he wants what's best for us. We can only know the now and leave the rest to him. Now, if there's a block to being able to fully surrender to Allah as described, then that's an opportunity for you and me to work on that, to strengthen our Islam, to strengthen our submission. So the way to do that is to turn to Allah in prayer and ask for his aid and to be able to rely on him and to be able to rely on him and him alone. The next station is that of Iman. That is defined as faith. And in the first station of Islam or submission, the submission is external. It's a physical act, prayer fasting, hajj. Iman, on the other hand, is an internal belief. It's on the inside where we can determine if we truly believe in Allah as our maker and as the provider and caretaker of all things, and if we really believe in his plan for us. In this station of Iman, we can potentially open ourselves to allow Allah's love to enter. With faith, we completely trust and rely on God and not on ourselves. As the Prophet ﷺ said, quote, Iman is belief in Allah, his angels, his book, his messengers, the last day, and to believe in destiny, both good and bad, unquote. One tactic that we can use to develop our Iman is to think about the last ayah in Surah At-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 129. And you say, God, quote, God suffices me. So you say, God suffices me. There is no God but He. In Him do I trust, and He is the Lord of the mighty throne. Unquote. God suffices me. There is no God but He. In Him do I trust, and He is the Lord of the mightiest throne. My friends, we have to choose to have faith. It's a deliberate act and not simply a passive feeling that magically happens. In the second stage, station on the path towards Allah, we have to stop at the station, rest, contemplate and decide to trust in Allah and decide that he and only he alone is enough for us. Remember, all else in our lives is fleeting. Everything is going to go. In Surah Al-Hadid, Allah reminds us, quote, the life of this world is but play and diversion and ornament and mutual boasting among you and vying for increase in property and children. 
the likeness of a rain whose vegetation impresses the farmer, then it withers such that you see it turn yellow and it becomes chaff, unquote. And then right in the next verse, Allah tells us what we should be doing. Quote, race unto forgiveness from your Lord. So as I mentioned at the top, all that we love, all of our things and all the people in our lives, all the things that we want will go away, will wither or will pass, except for Allah. Having faith means trusting and relying on Allah and asking for forgiveness instead of relying on ourselves. So pray to be with Allah, pray for belief and trust in his will and that he loves us. We foster this faith in our hearts with prayer and asking Allah to open our hearts. We foster Iman when we acknowledge all of the gifts and goodness we have in our lives, our senses, companionship, food, and so on. And when things aren't going our way, that's an opportunity to, to turn towards Allah. I read in another book, Du'a, which is called Du'a, Weapon of the Believer, uh, by Yasser Qadi, that Allah wants us to turn to him in times of distress. So when times are tough for you, perhaps it is because Allah wants, is calling to you to seek him. I know that that's been true in my life. أقول قولي لي أقولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I say this saying of mine, and I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you, and for the rest of the Muslims. So ask Him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulullah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, all exaltations belong to Allah and peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So finally, we come to the third and final station, which is Ihsan. Commonly translated as excellence, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said Ihsan is, quote, to worship God as if you are seeing him. For even if you cannot see him, you know that he sees you, unquote. Ihsan is the station where you are aware of Allah's presence in everything and in everyone. Stated in another and better way, Ihsan is when you are in a constant state of awareness of Allah. When you are, sorry, Ihsan is when you are in a constant state of awareness of Allah's all-encompassing love for you. The things that bring us comfort, people, food, dress, shelter, are there because he loves us, he loves you. Being in a state of ihsan means being in a state of goodness independent of those around us and not caring for reciprocity or appreciation for your acts of kindness. Ihsan is a state of beauty where one sees the hand of Allah in everything around us. The moss growing on a boulder, a breeze brushing by your cheek, the smell of food being prepared for dinner, the warmth of your bed after a long, tiring day, the random greeting of a stranger, all basically all of creation around us and all acts that happen. Everything becomes evidence of God and a reflection of Him. Ihsan is then praying and worshiping for the sake of worshiping, worshiping for the sake of pleasing in Allah, pleasing Allah and for obtaining His love. In this station, one becomes grounded in the present and is then free from remorse and regret over the past and free from worry about the future. One acts as if he or she will be with Allah throughout the day. So be mindful of Allah's presence all around you and make a conscious effort to remember this and be sincere in your prayer. Like all things, it takes practice and time to develop this and turn it into a habit, but it's possible. So in our short time on this earth, let us strive towards Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. O oh Allah, we pray you are pleased with our gathering today, and we gather to remember you and to praise you. O oh Allah, help us to submit to you and to keep our Islam strong. O oh Allah, help us to strengthen our Iman and our faith in you. Without your help, we are not capable of anything. O oh Allah, help us to reach a station of Ihsan, and excellence, and therefore a constant a station of constant love for you. O oh Allah, you are the highest and the mightiest and our sustainer, and we seek your aid and comfort. O oh Allah, please forgive us for our mistakes today, our mistakes yesterday, and our mistakes tomorrow. 
O oh Allah, you alone are sufficient for us. There is no God except you. We trust only in you, and you are the Lord of the mighty throne. I mean, so um, a brief khutbah, and let's move on to the uh, announcements for this week. So folks, Ramadan's coming up. The uh, Ramadan begins, I believe, April 13th. Um, now, Muslim space, there's a Ramadan arts and crafts um, activity. So stepping it up this year, Muslim space was going to host five virtual Ramadan arts and crafts sessions this year, one on each Sunday in Ramadan at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. Each session is going to be led by a crafting specialist who will guide your kids through a simple project. The kit is $10 for all five crafts. It includes the bulk of the materials needed for all five sessions. You'll be asked to provide the basics like glue, scissors, tape, cookie cutter example. So the inventory is running low, so don't hesitate and get yours today. On the email, on the WhatsApp link, or on the website, you can order your craft kit. So calling all home cooks to submit their iftar inspiration videos. So basically, you spent the last 12 months baking bread and binge watching Master Chef, and now it's time to put your skills on display. Muslim Space wants to showcase your kitchen talents on our iftar, iftar inspiration series this Ramadan. So if you can, submit a short video of you preparing your favorite dish or Ramadan staple so we can share it with the community. And don't forget to include the recipe. Email info at muslimspace.org to contribute. This was pretty neat last year. The deadline to submit is April 6th, which is this Tuesday. Don't forget chaplain office hours and spiritual check-in is every Thursday uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Central Time. Next one, or it was actually last night, was the most recent one. Chaplain office hours are available weekly on Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Central Time via Zoom, hosted by our in-house chaplain, Sam Amelik. It's an opportunity for you to check in with the chaplain on any matter, with the focus being on your faith, path, life's challenges, spirituality, current events. Chaplaincy services are intended to be open for and open to all members of the community, not just those who might be in a rough patch. And then uh, tomorrow, April 3rd at 6.30 p.m. is the last group discussion based on the class offered by Bayan, by Bayan, the prophetic biography taught by Dr. Jonathan A.C. Brown. So it's been a three month guide to complete the course and tomorrow's the last class. There's a dedicated page for all the details. So if you have time, join in uh, 6.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Sunday, April 4th at 11 a.m. Central Time is the monthly Quran Halaqa. This month's surah is Surah Al-Kawtha. There's a dedicated program page. Uh, there's a playlist, and then it'll be on Zoom. So 11 a.m., please register and go to the website to register for that. All right, so then uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, the fifth annual school library Ramadan book gift project. So April 4th is National School Librarian Day, and April 11th is National Library Day. Every year for the past five years, Muslim Space has been delivering book bundles to the public schools in Austin, in the Austin area, Austin, Round Rock, Leander, all the ISCs, as a way to enhance understanding of Islam, Muslims, and other non-dominant cultures. The goal of the annual book project is to promote authentic narratives of Muslims and other marginalized groups and identities. The result is twofold. It places a familiar image and identity for Muslim youth to relate to, relate to and it normalizes the Muslim experience for non-Muslims. It's really successful. Uh, you can contact uh, Shadia to find out what the librarians have been saying. This year's books are Golden Domes and Silver Lanterns by Hena Khan. And the second book is Fauja Singh Keeps Going by Simran Jeet Singh. So basically each school sponsorship will cost $20. And we're basically aiming to deliver 20, uh, sorry, 200 of these book bundles. Basically two of these books will be delivered to the ISDs. So that they, the librarians can stock it in their libraries and kids can check them out. Please see the sponsorship info below. And if you wanna contribute, you can go to email at Muslim, uh, info at muslimspace.org and you can even pay by PayPal or Venmo. So be sure to mention book sponsorship in the memo. In the, in the memo. So go to the website to check it out, it's pretty cool. Uh, next on Thursday, April 8th is the is, uh, is Ramadan prep workshop. So join us for an expert and spiritually guided discussion on how to prepare yourself for Ramadan and learn ways to get the most out of this blessed month. The topics to be discussed include how can we prepare ourselves for Ramadan, the best practices to get the most out of Ramadan, and discussion of the themes to focus on during Ramadan. Again, that's Thursday, April 8th, 6 p.m. Central Time. The panelists are going to be uh, Chaplain Osama Malik and Sister Yasmin Turk. It's going to be live on Zoom, so please make sure you register so you get the Zoom link. Uh, that's a great way to prep. Again, Ramadan, I believe, is uh, the 13th, Ramadan, 13th of April. Finally, last announcement, the Functioning Muslim. 
So we're excited to welcome you to an, an inclusive space centered on your needs as they relate to a positive, healthy Muslim identity. With this group, we aim to connect you with other like-minded individuals in the hopes of fostering community connection and personal growth. Muslim space facilitators are committed to seeing you achieve your best self. The program is open to individuals ages 18 to 24. And in an effort to identify and center these needs, please complete, there's a Google form, so go on the website, you'll find it, and feel free to be as honest as possible. All information is confidential and is only being used to inform sessions which are free once a month on Zoom and are 90 minutes each. The first plan, the plan is to start the first session in May after uh, Ramadan's over and finish and conclude in December of 2021. Again, email info at muslimspace.org for more info. Last, last, last announcement. There's a community, community survey that's going around. Super important. It's basically, uh, it's feedback about what the community needs are so Muslim Space can tailor um, projects and, uh, and events to what you need. Um, and so this is a way for you to make your voice heard and to make Muslim Space a better place for you. Again, go to the website, you'll find a link to that, um, to that survey. And that's it, pretty much. Um, so thank you all for being here. Uh, how's everyone doing? How's your week been going? Everyone getting ready for Ramadan?